dieters, that's going to be an important issue as well. Oh, well, so really see the difference. You'd have to create a controlled environment where like they each do the same thing every day, and the people that way well, you can see like the people that have the low carb diets and the non low carb diets, like we'll see how it's changing or different. Right. If we're going to get reliable information, we need to really have some some good control over what these people are doing on a regular basis to make really good decisions, to make really good observations, we have to be able to identify that there's nothing out of the ordinary that these people are doing that's affecting their weight loss. That their weight loss, if it's happening, is due to the same conditions that every person is put under. Okay? So all of this stuff is good. These are all important aspects of dealing with answering this one question. And everything that we've talked about here in some way deals with different parts of statistics. The one thing that a lot of you have picked up on is we need to be able to design a good way of collecting our data. Splitting our groups into control groups and non-control groups. Dieters and non-dieters. That's an important aspect of statistics. So the design of an, for lack of a better word, experiment to collect data. That's the first step in answering a, que a question involving statistics. How am I going to collect my data? Have I thought of a good way of going through and collecting the data to answer the question that I want answers to? The second thing. The second thing we do is we want to have a good way of describing the data. After I've collected this data that I'm working with, how do I describe it? What do I do with it? I have to have some way of telling other people, here's the data I've collected, here's what it's telling me. Okay? Here's a summary of it. Here's what it is. And then the final thing that we're going to do, or the final thing to do in this specific um, experiment, or this specific example, is to identify or make inferences guesses based on the data collected. Okay. These three parts here are the three main um, components of statistics. Designing experiments, describing data, and making inferences of that data once you've collected it. Okay. All right. on some of the things that we talked about today. When answering a question like the one that I just raised, there are some important things that we identify. identify where we're getting our data. Okay? As we, we talked about, we're going to go out and we're going to collect uh, people from that from last example. We're going to go out and we're going to collect people, and those people are going to eventually lead us to the data that we're interested in. Okay? Now, when we're asked the question, what we really have to do is we have to identify who or what does this question refer to. Okay? An example. Suppose we look at a survey of 1,708 U.S. adults. And they were asked if global warming U.S. adults that we asked about uh, global warming. All right. Now
Now, ultimately, who am I interested in? What is the group of people that I'm interested in gaining information about here? America, U.S. The key thing that I'm interested in here is I'm interested in the opinions of the United States adults. This group, this group of people, is what is referred to as the population of interest. These are the people whose opinions I am interested in. Okay? I am interested in a population. Okay? The population, as a statistical definition, is the group or collection of subjects <laughs> They are trying to gain information about. All right. So population. It's important to identify the population. If I'm interested in what U.S. adults are, are what their opinions are, <coughs> does it make sense for me to go to Cuba and start asking people in Cuba, "Hey, what do you think about global warming?" Well, you know, I can do that, but that doesn't tell me anything about the opinions of U.S. adults. So that's not going to be very helpful. Right? Same thing with the dieting question from earlier. If I'm interested in whether a low-carb diet has a um, leads to a significant weight loss, does it do me any good to go to the uh, Golden Corral and just start asking people, hey, how much weight have you lost today here at the Golden Corral? Probably not, because most people there are probably not on a low-carb diet. Okay? So identifying what group of people you are trying to gain information about an important aspect of, of dealing with statistics. You have to be able to identify the population before you can proceed further in your um, data collection. Okay. All right. So in this example here, we're interested in the U.S. adults. Now, there are over 300 million U.S. adults. Does it make sense for me to have to go out and ask every single person what their opinion on global that would take an enormous amount of time. Now, granted, this last year, the U.S. did such a thing. They went out and collected data on all U.S. adults. It happens every 10 years. It's called the census. Uh, they do that. But if you look at sort of the cost involved in doing that, and the amount of time invested in doing something like that, it's a very lengthy process, very time consuming. It doesn't always make sense to go out and ask every single person this is where the power of statistics really comes into play. Statistics doesn't necessarily need the entire population to give you good results. Statistics allows us to take smaller groups, smaller groups from our population, and use that data to sort of make good predictions about the entire population. Okay? Those smaller groups are called samples. Typically, samples are significantly smaller than the population. Okay? So these are the smaller collections of subjects from the population. Okay. All right, so in our example over here, we've identified our population as U.S. adults. What's our sample? The sample over here is the 1,708 U.S. adults that were actually surveyed. So we have a small sample of the U.S. adults over here that we're actually getting our information from. If I further this example and said that 980 said yes. This now gives us some information about their sample that we can use to extrapolate or make inferences about the entire population. Okay. All right. Now, this number that I have here is 980 that said yes. What does that 980 describe? What is this describing? Okay. This is the number of people from my sample that believe this 